It was the late 1970s. From coast to coast, rock and roll bands were making themselves heard. Record labels were churning out hits with groups like The Romantics, The Knack, The Ramones, Blondie, and Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. In Miami, scores of young cutting-edge rockers were making their own kind of noise and producing some of the best original music in the country. Thousands of eager fans flooded local venues. Record labels and press circled, poised to discover the next big thing. It was a given that these bands were destined to join their northern rock and roll brethren in the limelight. Fame and fortune were just a power cord away. This week, Don't Miss the Kids, live on stage all week at the Level 3. That whole scene, I really think, was the perfect storm. It was the time, it was the place, it was the radio station, it was the studios, it was the clubs. I'd say people, I'd say luck, I'd say talent, and the right timing, and it came together. It was the best time of my life so far, those young years, you know, those teen years. The power chord thing with those little infectious catchy melodies were indigenous to the Miami Sound with bands like the Reactions, Critical Mass. A lot of the punk stuff was very, very monotone, very basic in your face stuff. So we kind of took that to a next level. And what you're hearing nowadays with your big bands like Sum 41, Yellow Card, Green Day, all these bands, that's what they're doing. Power rock with, with catchy melodies. I think the seed was planted here. Not so much the guitar players, but the rhythm sections themselves did have, you could tell that this was a good drummer but, but there's some influences going on here that we just don't have in New York City. The Cichlids and Critical Mass got record deals. Billboard magazine called Charlie Pickett an up-and-comer. Tight Squeeze had a nightclub named in their honor. Slider was featured on MTV. The Zed Cars single, All Dressed Up, was getting airplay at colleges around the country and the kids were opening shows for some of the biggest names in rock music. But the breakthrough that put other music scenes on the map, like punk in New York, and later grunge in Seattle, never happened in Miami. When that perfect storm hit, it doesn't last forever. There's just a window. The next wave came, and they didn't make it to the beach. What I knew about Florida at that time was disco. I never thought of rock and roll. I, haven't, I hadn't heard any rock and roll coming from Florida, but uh, disco was a big thing. So Florida, in my mind at least, became like the disco capital of the United States. Relegated to the southernmost tip of Florida, for Miami, location proved to be fatal. The crowds thinned, venues closed, and the music industry moved on. The Miami scene was little more than a minor footnote in rock and roll history. We had it for a while here. I regret to have to admit that there probably were a lot of bands down here who could have been really superstar status that kind of slipped through the cracks. I probably ideas. spent the past 15, 20 years trying to recreate what I had. To be honest, when I think about it now, I expected it would just come. Yeah. Because I thought, you can't work this hard, you can't believe this much, and, ha and it just not happened until now. It took 25 years and the death of one very special woman, Sheila Whitkin, to inspire the bands to reunite and give their music a second chance. You 